know how difficult it is to compete on today's open match circuit and there are so many variables in our sport that there's so many things that we can't control we can't control the peg that we draw and we can't even determine whether there's any fish in front of us or not however there are certain things that we can control like our kit our tackle and our actual bait as well and one of the things I love to just try and make sure I've got quite a bit of control over is the quality of my bait let's face it if you've got great quality bait it's not going to hinder your fishing in any way it can only enhance your fishing so why not make sure it's all taken care of nicely make sure it's prepared well and that just means that if there are any issues with your fishing during that match you're not going to be blaming the quality of your bait so this video is just showing you how I prepare for some of the competitions that I'm involved in and I'll just quickly take you through the routine of what I go through as soon as I arrive at my peg When I first arrive at my peg, there's a couple of things that I do even before I start setting up all my kit. Lots of people are obviously excited to get on the bank and they can't wait to get the box set up, get the tray set up and all that sort of thing. But for me, there's two things that I generally do. Now, one of them is if I'm using worms, I always wash the worms and I'll explain to you why I do that straight away. And the other thing is occasionally I will actually mix the ground bait on the bank on the morning of the match. Now, this is not something that I do all the time now. More often than not, I will mix the ground bait the night before. However, when we come to venues like this, which is a natural water uh, venue, we don't always quite know what sort of ground mate we're going to be needing. You know, sometimes it depends on the draw that you've got for the match. So it's difficult mixing your ground mate the night before when you don't really know what peg you're going to be faced with or what the conditions are going to be. So the second thing I would do would be to mix the ground mate. So I'll quickly take you through that process so you can see how I do it. It's very common now for people to know about mixing the ground bait the night before and it's something that I would love to do whenever I can do it. Now when we're fishing commercial waters they're a little bit more predictable certainly during the summer months when you know the water is generally going to be coloured and you generally know what kind of fish you're going to be targeting. However when you're faced with stunning venues like this you don't really know what kind of conditions you're going to be faced with. I was only here two days ago and the water level has come up over a foot in that period of time and the water clarity has gone much much clearer so so if I was coming here in a match I wouldn't have mixed my ground bait last night because I would want to see the conditions first for myself and then mix up my bait accordingly. We've all got our favourite ground baits there are loads and loads of different ground baits out there now if I was mixing this up on the morning basically the mix that I would want to use today would be this one okay and I will gladly mix this up no problem and as you can see it's quite a fine mix now one of the things that people don't really kind of think about too much is the actual um, coarseness of the ground bait or how fine it is now if you're using a ground bait that's got really large particles in there then those particles really need longer to soak in water so if you're going to be using quite a coarse mix unless you want it really really active like what we sometimes have it for when we're targeting roach then you really really need to mix it the night before some of the commercial ground baits some of the carp ground baits have got large particles in them and if that's the case you are using those coarse mixes for targeting carp and if you're fishing with a feeder where you want the mix much more inert then you might be obviously better off mixing that the night before to give those larger particles more time to absorb that water if not when you get to the bank if you're only giving your mix half an hour 45 minutes it might not be enough so your mix might still be quite active certainly with those larger particles now this is the mix that i would have loved to have used today but as you can see it's quite a light mix we've already seen the water clarity if i turn around you can see how clear it is you know it's almost like tap water all right so i wouldn't be happy using that mix on its own today i would want to tone that down and this is why we carry darker mixes with us some people carry a dye or a bait dye with them so if they wanted to use this mix then they can just add that dye to this mix to darken it down to suit the clearer water which is what we found generally that in clearer water darker mixes are better but all we can do is because we've got our mix there i can just add a dark mix to it so you can add dye if you want to add dye there are good dyes out there and there are dyes that aren't so good so be careful if you're thinking about going down the dyeing route but as you can see by adding this to the mix we're going to automatically darken that mix right down so if we got here and the water was coloured, I could have just used that mix on its own, the lighter coloured mix. Or obviously if we're faced with what we're faced with today, then obviously we can darken it down and make a really nice dark mix. And this will go darker as we actually mix it. It's quite a fine mix. But I still see people that, you know, even 20 minutes before the start of the match still haven't got round to mixing their ground bait. And part of that reason is because they're that excitable about getting to the peg, which is obviously what we want. We all love to be on the bank. 
but sometimes they get that immersed in setting up the tattle that the things that need a little bit of time to to prepare um and and just kind of uh, be right before the match they kind of overlook and leave too late so you find that they're going into a match with a mix that's not quite right or not quite ready so by doing it straight away you're giving it i mean most matches now you've probably got at least an hour to set up so an hour can be long enough for a mix like this which is really quite fine to rest all right that is the initial mix for me i will come back to that in about 20 minutes I will, if it needs more water adding to it to get the consistency that i'm after then i shall do that and then i will be popping it through a sieve to make sure it's a nice fine mix now if i plan on using worms which is obviously something that we do a lot especially in bream fishing which is obviously something that i do a lot of it's always good to just wash your worms you know it just makes sure that they're in great condition so i'll just show you what i would normally do i would access the bait straight away this is one of the first tasks that i actually complete as soon as i get to my peg so i've got some worms here I'm sure they're gonna be nice quality these are all right they were checked last night all right lovely dendrobinas and these are the ones that i will be chopping for today so what i would do is the first thing i would do is i would take out a selection of the worms or an amount of worms that i would expect to use in a session now if possible i always like to do one chop if that is possible just do one chop for the day okay so all i would do is get get a landing net head all right this one's fine this is the carp rubber net and the reason why this is important is because some um certainly of the commercial ones the mesh is really really fine if the mesh is too fine you're going to find that you're not going to be able to wash them very well because it's so fine the um the mesh actually just it doesn't allow this soil to go through them now i don't expect using many worms today but all i would do is simply that okay and you can do that dry to in initially clean them so as you can see all that soil's come out so all that soil is not going to be in your ground bait you're not going to be putting that in your feeder you only want your ground bait to be going in the feeder all right and all i would do then is simply just wash them okay you don't have to get out in the water like i'm doing you can do this with the, the landing net handle actually on the landing net and as you can see they're going really nice and clean and the only ones left in there well the only dirt left in there is the uh, bits of soil or the odd stone that is uh, too big to go through the mesh and then all we'll do is just pop them in a tub like that obviously when you're doing this amount of worms it's this is not so, so much of a big deal but certainly in summer we might be chopping up to half a kilo sometimes more and so it's important that you get them clean because there can be a lot of soil in there so that's all we're going to do now now what will happen now is over the next 20 minutes half an hour those worms will actually go down they'll go down to the bottom of the box and what that inevitably does is, is push all this dirt and any bits of twigs or whatever's in there it'll come to the top so we can quickly and easily just scrape that off so once we've done that two or three times whilst we're setting up all our other gear it means we're gonna have really nice clean worms and by doing it as soon as you get to your peg it just means that they're doing all the hard work for you you're busy just getting on setting your tackle up so they're going to be lovely and clean by the time you're ready to chop them so just a word of warning on that um it's now november the water is very cold so as you can see they're hardly riddling so this process will take longer in summer the water is warmer they will they won't be as stunned as what they are now because they've suddenly been dunked in cold water so in summer this process is much quicker but in winter it will be slower so just make sure you allow plenty of time to do it well it's been half an hour now since we last added any water to this ground bait and as you can see this is a really nice fine mix you know i really like this mix as you can see it's nice and dark now completely different color from how it was going to be but that's because we've darkened it down with this spotted fin mix all right it doesn't matter what you use you can use dye if you wish but as you can see how we've darkened that down but we just means that we've tailor made that mix to the actual water clarity that you can see there you know and and that's why we do carry two or three different ground baits or options in our bag when we come to natural venues like this so as you can see even though that's a nice fine mix there's still quite a few lumps in there so that's why we need to put it through a a good sieve make sure it's a nice robust one like this one and we can put that through there and just look how many lumps are there you know if we'd been feeding that if we hadn't sieve this or put it through a riddle like this um, all those lumps would have been in the ground bait and obviously a fish can come in and eat any of those lumps and it's going to fill the fish up quicker and obviously we don't want to do that we don't want to fill the fish up we want to 
give the reason for a fish to be there to come and have a look at our ground bait so we don't want all these options here of these big meals for them so don't waste them push them through your sieve ground bait's not cheap so we don't want to go throwing it away all it is that mix there's nothing wrong with that mix it just means that those those lumps are basically parts of the ground bait that have absorbed more water than the others so we put that through a nice sieve now and as you can see that's lovely and fine now all right and it's lovely and nice and dark and it suits the the water clarity that we're fishing in lovely lovely um fine mix like that and this will also allow us to over wet it now that's just a medium consistency if i just show you this talked about wet mixes before if i go out into the water i'll put a dry mix there so that's your dry ground bait as you can see a little bit of cloud coming off it blends in well but you try that with a wet mix completely different cloud look at that wet cloud coming off it incredible and that's why fine mixes like this are very very versatile so now we've done the initial mix of ground bait if we go back to the worms there we go look you can see all that soil all those stones has all been separated so i can simply just scrape those off and over the again if i leave these again another 20 minutes or so 10 minutes there we go lovely clean worms i can leave them a bit longer now like i said with this quantity of worms it's not quite as important but when you're mixing a larger quantity it really can be important and don't forget that some worms are uh, in better condition than others some come with really fine soil that's almost like peat some come with little bits of stone and gravel in just like these ones are so that's when it's um, it's just important to just kind of make sure that you've got rid of them out of there before you start chopping them dead red maggots are a staple of most of our fishing now whether it be commercial fisheries whether it be natural venues like this and even on rivers now lots and lots of people use dead red maggots and one of the things that surprises me is that a lot of people don't actually wash them or just make sure that there aren't any floaters in there as well lots of people do their own i do a combination you know sometimes i do my own and sometimes i do actually buy them from the tackle shop lots of tackle shops sell dead red maggots now but it's amazing certainly the shop bought ones it's amazing how many floating maggots you might have and also a lots lots of the maggots now are um they're krilled dead red maggots so there is quite a bit of, of of stuff in there that's going to be floating and we don't want that you know you wouldn't want that in your ground bait you don't want bits coming off it unless you're obviously targeting roach the majority of the time we're not we're targeting fish that are down on the deck so you want a nice inert mix you don't want bits coming off your ground bait so why would you want to be introducing that into your actual swim through the feeder so these ones for example all you need to do is just whack them in a tub like that now normally people would have just fed those exactly how they are but as you can see look how many of those are actually floating now these were all just live maggots that i've actually killed these ones myself the shop bought ones are worse than this generally not because not because of floating maggots but because of anything that they might have added in there like krill and things like that and a lot of people just introduce that straight into the feeder or into the ground bait and then obviously feed the ground bait into the swim but as you can see there's quite a few floaters there and there's bits of um, sawdust there might be bits of maize in there as well and that's all going to be floating rising up off your off the bottom you know away from your feeder if you're fishing with a feeder but just pull them off you know it's just another way of just trying to ensure that you you're not giving the fish a reason to leave your peg all right you know it, there's nothing worse than if you've got fish in your peg that you know by having a mix and things that's coming off it floating off the, off the actual mix itself and off the feeder you're just trying to almost encourage the fish to leave your swim and go up higher in the water or if there's any toe on it move out of the peg completely so just double check that's all it is and it's the same with dead pink ears or any sort of dead baits like that just all you've got to do is you've just seen how long that took me but it's just making sure that all those maggots there now are going to sink and they're going to stay on the bottom in your peg well our ground baits right now our maggots are all right let's go back to the worms and look at that beautiful clean worms nothing there so we can chop them now there isn't any anything there that we don't want to be going in the swim lovely clean worms like i say when you're doing a bigger quantity than that obviously it's more evident and it's more important but just look how clean they are it's just good practice and it means that you're not putting anything extra through your feeder than what you actually want to be putting through and one final thing that i know lots and lots of people overlook and that is the fact that a lot of the time now we are carrying bait to our pegs in bags all right and that might involve live maggots these are ones that i was out on a session with yesterday there's a bit of ground bait in there as well 
But if you, they've been bagged up overnight, they're going to be very, very dormant. They're not going to be riddling. At this time of year, certainly on venues like this natural reservoir, live maggots and live pinkies, live baits can be so much more effective than dead ones. If you plan on fishing with a maggot feeder, for example, which is something that we do all the way through winter, you need live maggots. Get these maggots open. Let the air get to them so they're nice and lively. Again, I still see people overlooking it, opening them up right at the start of the match and they can't even use a maggot feeder because they won't even come round for the first hour. So if you do that straight away, before you get all your gear out, by the time the match starts, these are gonna be nice and lively and it just means that you can fish with something like a maggot feeder right from the outset, which might give you a bit of an edge. There are so many things in fishing that we simply cannot control, but just making sure that our bait is in tip-top condition is just something that can only help our fishing. Most of the fishing that we do, certainly on large natural reservoirs, where you don't even know if the fish are in front of you, a lot of the fishing that we do is based on confidence, and that's why we use a lot of the ground baits that we've got confidence in. And just by making sure our bait is right, then that can only help your confidence, and hopefully it's going to help you catch more fish. I hope you've enjoyed this insight into the way that I prepare for matches. If you have, then please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd want to see more videos from this channel so thanks for watching really appreciate it and i look forward to seeing you next time